Hey everybody, Austin here. Uh, thanks to COVID-19, I'm coming to you from my backyard. Uh, but I wanted to take this chance to uh, go ahead and announce a pretty big trip that we got coming up. Um, next month, uh, my brother and I are going to be paddling uh, the length or most of the length of the Noose River uh, here in North Carolina. We're going to be paddling uh, the Mountains of Sea Trail segments uh, 11A to 16A. Uh, but we're going to be putting in in uh, Smithfield, North Carolina, the same place that I put in uh, last May when I did that uh, solo canoe trip. Uh, and then we'll be paddling 170 miles. Uh, past uh, Goldsboro, past Kinston, uh, past New Bern, uh, and then taken out in uh, the Pine Cliff Recreation Area. So, big trip. Uh, we're projecting potentially about a week and a half um, that it's gonna take us, uh, hopefully uh, COVID-19 dependent. But anyways, uh, my brother and I just finished uh, an overnight shakedown trip on the Cape Fear River. Uh, and the, one of the big reasons for that trip was to make sure that uh, we had a good gear shakedown um, for the big trip uh, on the noose. Uh, so I wanted to take a chance to uh, just kind of show you what, what we got going on um, and some, some of the gear that's going to be coming along with us. So um, I'll start out with uh, the kayak. Um, the kayak that I'll be paddling is uh, the Native Ultimate uh, FX-15. Um, I really, really like this kayak. Uh, it's not the fastest one out there. I use it uh, mainly because it is, a, is like a hybrid of a kayak and a canoe. Um, so it has some of the speed uh, and maneuverability of a kayak, uh, but it's still going to be packable like a canoe. So I'm able to pack all of this junk uh, in there relatively easily. Um, so that's the Native FX-15. Uh, stuff that I'm going to be wearing, uh, we'll start out with my uh, PFD. Um, this is an NRS uh, Chinook uh, fishing life jacket. Uh, not a big fisherman, but I really like this uh, life jacket because it's got pockets. Um, it's got stuff that you can store stuff. So um, it's got a small pocket up here that I basically use for uh, my whistle, um, camera lens, caps, uh, stuff like that. Um, down here, uh, I've got Velcro pockets for uh, snacks. Um, you can see I still got a cliff bar uh, from the last trip in there. Um, but good place to keep snacks and stuff to, uh, that's easily accessible throughout the day. Also got my um, Garmin InReach. Uh, got this maybe almost a year and a half ago at this point. Uh, this comes on me with every trip, um, but this is a fantastic option. Uh, great peace of mind uh, as a, a satellite uh, text messenger. Um, when you don't have uh, cell reception, you can uh, talk with, uh, I'm able to talk with my uh, wife um, and then she's able to watch where we are on the map. And then most importantly, it has an SOS button. So in the case that we actually do need help or a rescue or anything like that, um, it's very easily uh, accessible. So, and then I keep that tethered uh, to the life jacket itself. Um, on this side, I don't have it in here at the moment, but this is a waterproof pouch for my phone, uh, also tethered to the life jacket. And I uh, use my phone uh, when we have cell reception, obviously for uh, text messaging and whatnot, but my phone has a bunch of maps on there uh, we use for navigation. Um, I also use my phone uh, when I'm flying the drone, so it's good to have this thing uh, easily accessible. Um, but that's, that's pretty much my life jacket. Um, as far as equipment for the boat, uh, I have a uh, bilge pump, uh, hand bilge pump for uh, getting water out of the kayak. Um, this thing is worth its weight in gold as far as I'm concerned, because uh, we've used it, I've used it many, many times to uh, bail myself out, literally. And uh, very, very efficient, very easy. Um, so I just keep that tucked away. Uh, and then in the same, kind of the same purpose, I carry a sponge to uh, get up those little, little, um, puddles of water that this thing can't reach. Uh, and then I just keep that tethered uh, so that it doesn't float away. Um, up here, I have uh, my bow line uh, with two carabiners on either side. Um, right now, uh, I've got it braided uh, so that it doesn't take it. One, uh, the, the braid makes it so that it doesn't tangle as easily. Uh, and then it also, when you wanna have a large amount of rope and a short amount of dis or, uh, length, um, you can braid it. Uh, and then the cool thing is, is that when I, when I actually need to lengthen it, um, just give it a tug and it comes on, undone just like that very easily. Um, so I have that clipped up to the front of the boat. Uh, and then this is a separate piece of rope that I, uh, I'll keep clipped uh, with an arm's reach uh, on the, the center yoke. Um, but this is a purely for uh, self-rescue, for rescue, um, if somebody's in the water and needs it. Um, but this is a rope bag. Um, so in, in this case, uh, if you need to throw it, um, all you do is uh, undo the drawstring, hold on to this end, and then uh, this is easily thrown to wherever you need to. 
uh, and then the rope just kind of comes out. Uh, so uh, good to have some safety equipment. So next uh, I'll talk about propulsion. Um, my main paddle that I'm going to be using is the, the Werner uh, Kamano Hooked. So this is uh, officially a fishing kayak paddle, um, but I really like it uh, because I also have my touring kayak, the Wilderness Systems Tempest 170. Uh, and so this paddle is uh, adjustable. So uh, you can see here where it, it'll, uh, it goes from, uh, if you all the way down to the, the smallest size is 140 centimeters. Uh, and then it'll extend out to 160 centimeters. So this way, I'm able to use this kayak or this paddle uh, with both of my kayaks. So when I've got the touring kayak, I don't need this as long, so I can shorten it down. And I actually did that uh, when I was on the uh, Apalachicola River trek. And uh, so, but then when I'm paddling this bad boy, um, I'm going to need a much longer paddle because it's a much wider boat. Um, so I extend it all the way out to 160 centimeters, uh, and it does me very well. Um, so this is my primary uh, paddle. I've also got a uh, GoPro camera mount on here. Uh, I tried it out on uh, our shakedown trip and quite honestly, the footage that I got out of it <laughs> made me seasick. Um, so I'm not sure if I'm gonna keep that on there, but it doesn't really bother me uh, while I'm paddling. Um, but that's my primary paddle. Um, I also will be carrying a secondary uh, paddle uh, if this one breaks, gets lost, whatever. Uh, and this one's not nearly as uh, sexy. Um, but this is just a nose arc trail uh, fishing kayak paddle. Uh, and then this actually came with my kayak. Uh, the person that I bought the kayak from on Craigslist uh, asked if I wanted an extra paddle. And uh, if anybody ever asks you if you want an extra paddle, uh, the only answer is yes. Um, so I've got an Ozark, Ozark trail kayak paddle uh, that's just gonna get tucked in um, behind my seat. Uh, hopefully I never need it. Uh, but you always want to have uh, an extra paddle uh, because if you don't uh, and your primary means of propulsion uh, breaks or gets lost, uh, your trip will come to a grinding halt, um, which is no, no fun. Um, so those are uh, my kayak paddles and kind of boat gear um, to actually get me down the river. Next up, I'll talk about uh, camera gear. Um, since I'm a, a camera geek and uh, like to take lots of pictures and lots of videos, um, I'm going to be bringing a ridiculous amount of camera gear on this trip. Um, and so the way I look at it is that a camera is only as good as uh, its accessibility. So if you have a camera packed away, um, you're not going to be able to use it when you want it. My, uh, my mom always called them Fodak moments, um, but when a Fodak moment uh, presents itself, uh, you want to have that camera ready to go. Uh, I'll be carrying my uh, GoPro Hero 7, uh, GoPro Hero 5. Uh, I've got an Olympus TG870 that has served me very well for going on four years now. Uh, the, the Olympus is kind of my main vlogging camera when I'm paddling. Uh, that's going to go up here uh, on, my, uh, on this, uh, and then I'll have my two GoPros. Uh, one will probably go on a uh, head mount. Um, I might switch it up and, and put it on this mount here, just kind of looking forward. Uh, and then I'll have a camera here in the back um, just to kind of give that different perspective. Uh, I'm trying to kind of step up my game as far as uh, filming goes uh, and kind of switch up uh, camera angles and whatnot. So, uh, and then the lastly, I'll have the uh, Canon M50 that I'm shooting this video on uh, as my kind of vlogging camera uh, when we're on shore uh, and then taking pictures. Um, this is uh, the first camera case that I'm going to be carrying. Uh, this uh, is going to go right between my legs so that uh, I can always get to it, um, but I'm going to keep my Canon M50, uh, my kind of my nice camera uh, that's not waterproof. I'm going to keep that in here. Um, I like this case uh, because it's it's deep, um, and so my uh, I keep my Rode Video Micro on top of my Canon, uh, and so this way I can uh, stick the whole thing uh, with the with the mic and everything on top of it uh, down in here, and it's still going to be tall enough that I can close it up. Also, be keeping an extra uh, LED light in here for shooting at night, um, extra lens for the Canon, uh, and then just kind of miscellaneous batteries and and. Uh, whatnot for, for camera stuff, but keeping this easily accessible. This thing uh, is waterproof, so very sturdy. Um, and then, like I said, just very handy to have. The other uh, camera case that I'm gonna have with me is gonna be specifically for my drone, uh, my DJI Spark. This is uh, another waterproof case. It's gonna have the Spark in there. Uh, it's also gonna have extra batteries. My controller um, has space for an extra phone. Um, but then I'm also probably gonna keep like extra camera batteries and whatnot in here just cause it's got a space for it. 
Um, but again, this is, uh, I like to keep stuff handy, um, but this is uh, when you're, when I'm kayaking or when I'm canoeing, I like using this case because it's easily, uh, easily accessible. You can get it in and out quickly uh, and it's still waterproof. Uh, and then this is going to be kept uh, right behind me in my seat um, so that I can just reach around and grab it. Um, so that's my camera gear. Uh, so let's talk uh, camping gear. So most of my uh, camping gear, um, things that I'm going to be using while we're, we're at camp at night uh, is going to be in this main bag. So pretty much everything that you see on this side is going to be going in this bag. Um, this is a sea line uh, boundary pack. Uh, it's uh, 70 liters. Uh, and it is waterproof uh, with a roll top closure. And it's gonna have all my um, sleep system, shelter, um, miscellaneous stuff is gonna go in there. Um, so the first thing uh, I'll have in there are just my clothes. Um, this is not gonna be exactly what I bring uh, on the trip, but this is my uh, z packs bag, my roll top bag. Um, this is gonna have my clothes in it. Uh, packing for this trip has been kind of a challenge. Um, it's gonna, like I said, we're gonna be gone for one and a half to two weeks. Um, so what I'm probably going to do is have a, a set of clothes that I'm going to paddle in. I'll have a, a backup set of clothes that I'll pack in here. Uh, and then since, uh, again, COVID-19 dependent, uh, we're going to be paddling through Kinston and New Bern. Um, we might be going into town for, for dinner or resupply. And so we want to have some town clothes. So um, I'll keep that in there. And then probably a towel um, for shower. And uh, if we want to take a dip in, in the river or whatnot and dry off, um, keep that in there. So that'll be my clothes bag that'll go in there. Uh, next up will be uh, my shelter system. Um, I'm going to be using my uh, East Hill Outdoors Dragonfly uh, tarp and then my War Bonnet uh, Ridge Runner hammock along with the poles. And then this is also all going to go into uh, its own dry bag inside of here. Uh, packing for any paddling trip. Um, the key to packing is lots and lots and lots of dry bags. Keeping your stuff double bagged, triple bagged if you're really getting paranoid. Uh, because if this springs a leak, I still want to have my sleep system uh, and my shelter dry. Um, so that's why it's going to be kept in its own bag. Um, the other thing I'm going to be testing out uh, on this trip uh, is that, like I said, I'm going to be bringing my, my hammock as my primary sleep system. or my pr uh, And so uh, there may be times on this trip where there aren't any trees for uh, hammock camping. Uh, so I will be testing out the War Bonnet Ridge Runner as a bivy. Um, so we'll see how that works. Uh, I'm not sure how successful that's going to be, um, but so we'll see. Uh, also in this bag, I'm going to have uh, a chair. So this is my REI Flex Light chair. Uh, probably won't keep this in a uh, waterproof bag just because I can live with it if it gets a little wet. Um, but we'll keep that in there. The red dry bag has got all things electronic. Um, it's got all my battery packs. It'll have cords. Uh, throughout the trip, I'm gonna be recharging from an outlet if I can find one. So it's got um, extra uh, plugs and whatnot. So this is where, uh, this, and I like to keep it in this bag because I know my red bag is gonna have all my electronics in it. So that'll be uh, in here, but mainly stuff, electronic stuff that I'm not gonna need throughout the day. It'll only be stuff that I use at night for recharging. Uh, next up is my um, sleep system. Uh, this is again its own watertight bag, uh, but this is my warm weather setup. So I've just got um, an old uh, army surplus uh, sleeping bag. I have a, an extra Costco quilt in case it gets cold. Uh, and then I've got my um, Thermarest NeoAir X-Therm and a Sea to Summit um, pillow. Uh, so that's my sleep system. It's all in here. I'm not going to get it out. But again, dry bag into a dry bag uh, for that. Uh, the next thing up is kind of everything else for camping. Uh, it's all going in this brown uh, dry bag. Uh, but I'll have my cook kit. I'll probably end up doing an extra uh, video for my cook kit because I have just uh, changed it up so that I've got a uh, Reflectix koozie cozy, however you say it. Um, I'll talk about that, but that's my cook kit. Uh, I've got some extra uh, cordage uh, for whatever you might need. Me too, that's stupid. Then one thing you're gonna need a rope for. I don't know what you're gonna need it for. They just always need it. A hand towel. I've also got my Sawyer Squeeze with my uh, Knock Vecto uh, bag. Uh, for the most part, I'm gonna be carrying water. Uh, these are the, the water jugs, water bags that I'm gonna be carrying. These are about five liters each. 
Uh, a minimum, I'm gonna bring at least two of these, uh, but I do have four, I'm, so I might bring all four. But in case, for whatever reason, run out of water, one breaks, and we, uh, I'll use this as a backup uh, to filter water. Um, we'll also have uh, my fuel, uh, stove fuel in there, and then I'll have my uh, silky saw and my hatchet for uh, processing wood, for uh, firewood. And then fortunately, um, as you can see, uh, I have uh, river birch trees in my yard, in my backyard. So um, I have all natural fire starter uh, via birch bark. Uh, so I got my fire starter, uh, matches, whatnot, everything in there. Uh, so all of that goes into this brown bag, which then goes into the uh, large dry bag. So that's basically everything that's gonna go in here. Uh, moving over to this side, um, this is gonna be my day bag. Uh, the theory is, is that uh, this is only going to be opened when I'm at camp, uh, and so I won't have to dig into this during the day. Uh, and this will be where I put everything that I'm going to need throughout the day. I think I mentioned it, but this is going to be one of the longer trips, one of the longest trips that any of us have ever taken. Uh, and so food is going to be uh, a planning factor. Uh, so my, my plan as of right now is to pack all of my food into this bag uh, and then break that up into my... Uh, my z packs food bag and I'll probably keep everything that I would need at camp. Uh, I'll put um, some of our breakfasts and dinners will go into this bag and then stuff, uh, snacks, lunch, um, stuff like that will go in this bag. And then again, everything goes in there. Dry bags inside of dry bags. Um, also in here, uh, I'll have, I call it my business kit, uh, but this has got my uh, toilet paper, trowel, and hand sanitizer uh, for taking care of business. Um, definitely want to have that handy. Uh, I'll also have my uh, little ditty bag here, uh, first aid kit, toothbrush, um, just miscellaneous stuff that I'm going to need uh, easily accessible. I'll have in here. An extra thing, a hand sanitizer. Uh, and then I'll also be keeping my uh, headlamp and an extra flashlight uh, handy in here because uh, in, in the event that we get to camp after dark, um, I don't want to be digging through here looking for my light. Uh, I want to have that ready to go. So I'll have that uh, in there. And so that will go, uh, this, this bag is going to go up front in the, in the bow of the kayak. Um, this is going to go in the stern. Um, but everything's going to be uh, kind of compact. Uh, and so, yeah, so that's it. Um, one of the last pieces I'll talk about uh, is my Yeti Roadie cooler. Um, that is 100% a, a luxury item on this trip. One thing I like to do is... Uh, have a nice cool beer uh, sitting around the campfire at night. And so, because I'm paddling the native Ultimate FX15, I got room for it. The cooler is just gonna go right behind my seat and uh, that'll give us the ability not only just to have cold beer, um, but if we wanna have some uh, perishable food, anything like that. It's also critter proof. Um, so we can, uh, if we need to put food in there uh, overnight to save it from the raccoons or the squirrels or whatnot, uh, we can throw that in there. Um, the last piece of gear I'll talk about uh, is just this. Uh, this is a, just an Ikea bag. Um, I really like these, use these because uh, as you can see, there's like lots of little stuff that you're going to be packing when you're out. Uh, and so there's, we're probably not always going to be camped right next to the river. Uh, there'll be times where uh, we have to pull up and then we have to walk to a campsite. Um, so these are really handy to kind of put, put stuff in and then uh, kind of combine. So all this small stuff uh, can go in here and then carry it in one big bag. Uh, and then the great thing about these is they fold down nice and easy. And then I'm probably just gonna keep this under my seat um, so that I, whenever I need it, it's there. Um, and then, yeah, I think that's it. Clearly this is not an ultralight trip. Um, lots of gear, lots of weight, um, but it's gonna be my first go at an extended trip like this. So we'll see how it, how it goes. Um, I'm super excited. Uh, I'm hoping that uh, this COVID-19 nonsense doesn't, uh, doesn't slow us up. So that's my setup. I look at any kind of gear shakedown as a snapshot in time um, because every because uh, gear evolves, uh, my gear choices evolve, uh, and then this is one of the, the biggest trips I've ever been on. So uh, my, my setup for, for other trips is probably not going to look like this, not as extensive at least. I'll try to put links in the description for most everything you see here. Um, if there's something that you have a question about, feel free to reach out. Um, but yeah, hope, uh, hope you enjoyed the video, hope you got something out of it, and uh, if you've got any questions, just shoot them my way, and I'll see you out there. Thanks for watching.